Hi everyone, it's Lillian here from Stamper's Niche coming to you from Spruce Grove, Alberta, Canada and welcome and it is a glorious night out there, gorgeous weather here where we are so um, I'm hoping it's nice weather where you are too and uh, have you ever noticed that Canadians talk about the weather a lot? When I've been in uh, tropical countries where the weather is much the same, say for Hawaii or somewhere like that, they don't talk about the weather. And uh, all of a sudden you have to think of other things to talk about. But here, no, we talk about the weather a lot. Um, so uh, welcome to Stamper's Niche. And I have a few announcements to make. And then we're going to get right down to... Uh, Ooh, I just about gave it away, to a project that I think you're going to really like. I've had it in my brain for a while now and it is going to now come out tonight. So let's go down to my desk and check out a few things that are happening first. All right. Okay, just going to angle the phone down. Couldn't find the little knob for switching things around. There we go. We're good there. Now, if we can be good on the computer, we'll be all set to go. And there we go, I think. Hey, we're sailing tonight. So on the weekend was, um, on Saturday was Stamping Staycation and it was so much fun and I know many of you were there. So if you were at Stamping Staycation, maybe say one thing that you are making now with, uh, from there and one thing that you liked. And if you weren't at Stamping Staycation, yesterday was national or International Creativity Day. So what did you do yesterday that was creative? I did make a card, but only one. We spent most of the day outside yesterday, and my husband was far more creative than me. He uh, he loves to garden, and so our yard is looking absolutely gorgeous. Um, maybe the most creative thing I did was get a barbecue going for supper. But uh, anyway, tell us one thing creative you did either yesterday or this weekend, and let's get started. Now, this is the very last day, 12, mid, well, 11.59 midnight. If you want to have the most amazing deal, um, uh, join Stamping Up. Why? Because you can get $206 worth of products for $135 with no sh shipping and handling or GST. So that's an added savings of $31.93. But that ends tonight at 11.59. So if that is interesting you, to you, and some of you have talked to me about it, be sure to go to my uh, website, and you would need your credit card and your social insurance number. Click on join and have your list ready because you cannot go over 206. So you want to get as close as you can and join tonight so that you don't miss out. If you're worried about stamping up, saying, well, saying something, if you don't do anything other than get the starter kit, they won't. They're quite, quite fine with that. So that's just a heads up that time is running out on that. The other thing, hi, Judy. Hi, uh, Karen. Oh, you bought ch wrapped chocolate chips for cookies today. I bet you I know what you're going to use those for. All right. The other thing that's happening right now until June 14th, if you have an order or if you gather some orders that equal $300 or more, you get 10% in stamp and rewards. That's $30. But for during this time, you get an additional $30. So that's a total of $60. So if you or you and your friends are wanting to place an order, there's a good way to get some, some extra free stuff. Okay. Now... I'm going to feature this stamp set tonight. It is one stamp set. It is one of the big ones. We call them the background stamp sets. Now I've shown you this before, but I'm going to show you a project with it tonight that I kind of think that you're going to like. So let's look at, we've, I've shown you in the past some of these and that's just stamping it once like that. This one here, 
what I did is I used a sponge dauber. I should turn these upside off. I'll just put them over there. A sponge dauber and I sponged the ink on. Now, what, what in the world was this color ink here? This is an oops. I took my Coastal Cabana and put it in the polished ink pad. And so we've got that unusual color there. But um, so I've got Daffodil Delight, polished pink, and that was supposed to be um coastal cabana but I still kind of like the effect so you can just add color to this stamp itself and then I huffed on the um, stamp to reactivate the ink so the ink starts to dry out by huffing on it then you've added the moisture and it works just like a charm so you can get that kind of look or you can take your ink pad and just smoosh your ink pad right down on the stamp and put different ones different places. When I first showed this stamp to my grandson, he immediately did this. He grabbed some ink. P Pumpkin pie is his very favorite color in the world, so it's always in there. And he did that. So that's the same type of thing as this. Or you can do something that the catalog mentions. Now let me just show you here. In the catalog, there's a little tip. There's so much teaching in the catalog and it says, create a unique multicolored effect by stamping the background once, then turning it 180 degrees, so turning it upside down, and then re-stamping. And so that's what I did on these here. So that's how I got this look here. So it's so on trend. Uh, tie-dye right now and I did that with this color here and then I used the baseball cap and cut it out there's going to be a card made with that but you can see how I did those two as well and then I will put that over here because I'm going to just talk about and some of you might say well once you've got that stamped how are you going to use it well I have shown you this card you can use it as a background and this I just have the one color and then it's going to be a background on this card here. So that's very easy to do. You can cut strips of it and use it just like you would designer paper and put it on your card. I'd likely mat it or something and then put another one this way. And so you can use pieces of it to make a card with. So that's another idea. I've already shown you that you can do die cut images. And so you can be thinking, well, what could I punch or die cut with those designs that would look really neat on a card? Um, let me just see here. I have to remember what I'm doing. Um, now I'm going to show you what inspired tonight's card. I needed to make cards for two grandchildren. And so I made these tie dyed um, t-shirt cards. So you can guess which grandson this was. I originally made it for the eight-year-old, the one that was turning eight, because it is pumpkin pie. But then this is going to be for another one. Now, this is a bigger card. So you would have to make your own envelope or something like that. So then I decided to resize this. Oh, just before I go on, you'll see that I use the Playful um, Alphabet, the six from the Playful Alphabet there. And then this was stamped with the uh, Grand Kid stamp set and then punched out with the tailored tag. So that's how that was made. So we're going to make basically the same card in different colors but scaled down so that it will fit in a regular card. So this is just one sample that we're not going to um, make this one. This is in the soft succulent. And on this one, instead of making the sleeves tie dyed, I made them a solid color. So that would look good in a blue jean type of thing as well. And I'm going to talk about these in a moment. So let's get uh, down to doing a little stamping here. And so let's clear my desk off. And you can use these large, large stamps on your clear block, the really big one. I think it's clear block H. Or you can use your Stamparatus. Hi, Catherine. Welcome. I'm going to use my Stamparatus just because I, I like that. I find that this stamp stamps beautifully. But I, I like that I can be able to do it more than once if I want 
and it'll also work because I'm going to show you how to do those two colors. So now we're, I marked my grid paper here and what I'm, what I'm going to do is put this there so that because I've got it lined up with this like that. Now this stamp is going to cover this whole paper so I can't use a magnet. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of our seal, just put Oh, I'm pressing too hard. It doesn't like to be pressed hard, seal doesn't. There we go. And so it's there, but it's going to be too sticky. Now I'm going to put my hand on it and take some of the stickiness off so it's just tacky. Now it will hold my cardstock in place right there. Now I'm going to bring back in the, dot, the stamp case and just put it under here so that it is a nice strong platform. And now we're going to bring in some ink. I'm going to use tonight uh, Fresh Freesia and Coastal Cabana. So let's do the Fresh Freesia first. Freesia? Freesia? I, I have troubles with that. So I'm going to ink all over and you can see by having the stamp case underneath this really, it helps to support it. And then I'm going to bring this over and press. Now I like to just press all over even using the palm of my hand. But if you have sore hands or if you have arthritis or something, you can bring in a whiteboard eraser or if you have a chalkboard eraser and you can go like this and just put some pressure and go like that. Either way works. But this is just a little trick if your hand gets sore. All right, let's open it up. And there we have it. Ooh, I like it. Now we have to clean it off before we add another color. So I am using my Simply Chamois. This is half a one that comes double in size and it comes as a purple color. Mine is well used and stained, but it still works well even if it's stained. So I'm just cleaning that ink off. And if your um, chamois dries out, it gets stiff. I find that if I just put a little bit of water in the sink and throw my chamois in and come back a minute later, it is nice and soft and pliable again. There we go. Now I'm going to, whoops, what do I have to do first? I have to rotate this. So I'm going to take it off, rotate it. So the bottom's at the top and the top at the bottom. Put it back in the same spot. That's why I marked my spot. And I'm going to ink this up now in Coastal Cabana and we'll see what we get. Anybody's husband's watching the hockey game tonight? I know mine's glued to it. Pretty exciting. And there, now we have the two-toned effect. Ooh, doesn't that look neat? Okay, we're going to move this to the side and keep that there. I'll clean this off afterwards. Now, what am I going to do with that? I am first going to cut a piece of it that is going to be two and a half by three and a half. Now, Oh, I better close my ink up. Sorry, time out. I'm going to be a little bit fussy. I want the, sp the center spiral to be the middle of the t-shirt. So I'm going to go like that. I can see through and see that's where it is. And I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer. And I'm not going to really sweat it a whole lot. Okay, I'm going to cut there. And I know that I want it to be two and a half. So I'm going to put that to the side. So now I can line that up at the two and a half. And it's not quite in the center, but it's kind of close. It will do. And then we'll line this up here just as a little guide. And this is going to be three and a half. So I got my spiral off a little bit, but It'll be just fine. Then I also need two squares that are going to be one and a quarter by one and a quarter. These are going to be the sleeves. So let's see, this is one and a quarter. Two and a 
by one and a quarter. Measuring is always interesting looking through a ca the camera. Now, I wasn't sure if I would have enough, so I actually did a spare one just in case. And be it's only because I cut down the middle of that, so I didn't have enough. So one and a quarter, there we go. So now we've done our cutting like that. Now, how do we get it to look like a shirt, right? So first off, we have to cut a little neckline in it. So what I did was I brought in, you could do use your punches. I'm going to use my layering circle dies and I'm going to use these two. Now you can use whatever you want. It's not the smallest one, but it's the next two. And I'll bring in my mini cut and emboss machine here. Let's see, what can you see? Can you see there? Put the plate down. So now what I am going to do is I'm going to take of these two, the bigger one, and I'm going to center it and take just a little bite out of it. So I'm making the neckline. Now I was, I've also done this idea with hockey jerseys and that kind of thing. And to do that, um, you can use a V like the triangle dies or something. Now you can bring in something that's sticky. This is a post-it note, washi tape works. Whatever you've got that's sticky that you can peel off. And now we're going to just run that through. And I don't know about you, I was wondering why on camera I often had trouble with my stamp and cut and emboss machines and it's because I was using them sideways and I have a bad habit of using my stomach to be part of the, the pushing. And so I wasn't using my stomach and it was, it was just too different for me. Okay, so that really went right in. So I'm going to use my take your pick tool and just loosen it up a little. There we go. So now we have got that there. But now if you look at, at this, you'll see I've got an extra little layer of white underneath there. And that's where the next smallest die, so this was this die, we're using the next smallest. We'll take that off. And I'm going to bring in a piece of, yikes, now I have to find it. I had several here. Well, it is going to be two and a half by one. I can't see it right now. Um, I know that I have a, oh, here they are, right here, right under my nose. Two and a half by one. The one doesn't matter, it just gives you lots, but the two and a half, then it's easy to center it here. So all I'm going to do, is bring this in and I'm going to put the outer edge where I cut, but the cutting is going to be in just a smidge. So therefore, I'll end up with a circle that's just a tiny bit smaller. So I'm just resting it here, putting this here, then I'm sliding that out of the way, holding it in place, Running it through again. And now we can take this out of the way. And peel this off. And there we go, we've got this. So for what I'm going to do first off, let's get some of these bits and pieces out. I'm going to bring in my uh, glue and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the shirt sleeves on. So I'm going to use it like a diamond shape. So this way, so the top is at there and to make sure it fits, I'm going to put it the two points right on the edge of the shirt. You can go like that as well, but it's not going to fit in a 
four and a quarter card. So we're our goal is that it's going to fit in the card, right? In a regular size card. So there we go. Like that. And hi, Fran. And there we go like that. We'll do the same on this side. Now, if you don't have this uh, stamp, you can make this shirt using designer paper or something like that. I just wanted to show you with this stamp because I think it is just so neat. Now we've got this. I almost threw that in the garbage after making it. So what we're going to do now is just put a bit of adhesive there. And then line it up like that. And now you've got just that edge of white that just kind of finishes it off. So now you have your basic tie-dye shirt. So now we just have to dress it up a little bit. When I made this, I did not have what I'm going to show you right now. Um, and it works fine. You can dress it up with whatever. I see some hearts flying up. Excellent. <laughs> That's wonderful. But on the weekend, I received this, the Hats Off bundle. And in here, you've got little pockets. And you've got sayings and dies. And so this is where, again, I got that hat that you were watched that I showed you earlier so I'll just show you what it looks like when some of the things are cut out so I thought this would be fun if we could use some of those so I cut out some pockets so we can play around here I cut out a life is great and I wasn't sure which one to use but I might go with that one and then I will also share with you the dilemma I faced. So I had this, so I did not know whether to layer it onto here, onto the Coastal Cabana, and then layer it onto the Fresh Freesia, or to layer it um, on the fr uh, fresh freesia which I've got somewhere else and put it on the coastal cabana it could have gone either way I could have thrown white into the mix but I made an executive decision so this is what's happening we're going to use coastal cabana as the base how many of you find that Often it's deciding which color when they both work well. Which color shall I use? Then I'm going to use this as the next layer. Now I've used the bark embossing folder just to add texture. You could use whatever. So let's glue that down. And this is quite a bumpy embossed image. So I'm being generous with my glue and sticking it down like that. There we go. And then I'm going to put the shirt at an angle here. I even know who this shirt is going to. Then I could decide to do that or this one here. I'm not sure. Let's see, which pocket shall I use? This pocket or this pocket? Ooh, I think that pops. What do you think? the Fresh Freesia Pocket, or the Coastal Cabana. I'm just going to bring in a stamp here. Which do you think, the Fresh Freesia or the Coastal Cabana Pocket? Fresh Freesia writing would show more. Yes, I'm thinking that might be true too. So I'm going to bring in the die for cutting that out. And But what about the pocket? Any, any takers on the pocket? Okay. Little bit of, I um, have people coming from all directions on the pocket. Okay, 
I'm just going to show you the really neat thing about these dies that came with the hat builder. So there are these two and they fit right inside each other. So what you do is you take, this one's got the stitching. It's just going to make stitching. It's not going to cut it out. So you layer it on and then this is going to do the cutting. So you layer that on like that. Then you take a post-it note or whatever and stick it down and run it through. I love having you guys tell me what you like. That's what I miss about not having in-person classes because you always helped me with these kinds of things. All right, now we've got a little bit of everything here. So let's bring it together. And I don't know about you, but this is often how I create. So we could go like that, or we could go like that. Oh, that almost gets lost. The writing almost gets lost. Um, da da da. Well, if we put the writing just below the pocket, there we go. What do you think? Like that? Well, I'm thinking, uh, you guys give me your feedback. I'm going to put the shirt on the card. And you can use dimensionals, but what I have here is um, the foam adhesive sheet. So it's it's like dimensionals, but the whole thing. And uh, they're just nice and thick, so you don't have to peel quite so many. And I've got some bits and pieces here, so I'm going to put them on. I use them in Stamping Staycation too. I'm kind of hooked on these things now. So there we go. And I'll put one here. There we go. And peel these off. Like that. And I'm just making sure the sleeves are not going to hang over the edge of the card. I could put it straight, but I'm going to put it at an angle. It fits either way, so that's not going to be an issue. Like that. Coastal Cabana Pocket, I'm reading. Coastal Cabana, okay. We'll do a Coastal Cabana Pocket, and we've got this little star. I'm going to stamp a star on that Coastal Cabana Pocket, just because it's fun. There we go, like that. So while I'm putting the pocket on, which writing? Which one shall I go with? Okay, pocket, where are you? You're going to go here. Shall I go with the uh, Fresh Freesia writing? I, I'll do that. I think you could go either way very easily. But there you go. There is our t-shirt card. So I hope you like that card. I had a lot of fun with it. It's so easy to do. I have made this card, and I haven't made it for a long time, but I have made this card, like I was saying, in, in hockey jerseys, soccer jerseys, whatever. So here's the same card in a couple of other colors. Now, what can you do with the scrap paper? You can use the scrap paper that you've cut off on the inside like that. So there is, there's a couple of ideas there. And um, I think that's it there for tonight. Now, just a couple of things to remember. Stamping Staycation, the next one is September 11th. So circle that on your calendars. Uh, registration won't be starting for a while, but make sure you save that date. So um, that is coming. 
And a big thank you for leaving your comments and your hearts and your likes and all that. I would just love it. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe. I would really love that. Now we have three different cards here. So we have the Soft Succulent, Fresh Freesia, and Coastal Cabana, or Bermuda Bay and Pumpkin Pie. Which one do you like the best? All right. Can you see yourself making some of these? I bet you, you can. All right. Thanks for joining me tonight. Enjoy that gorgeous weather out there and cheer whatever team you are cheering for onto victory. Bye-bye.